another two. You know, you can do that. You know, I, I know that, that job, it says that you should have a degree and everything, but apply for it. Mm -hmm. Apply for it anyway. You can do it. I can't. You believe I can? Yes, I believe you can do it. Gosh, be, be a word of encouragement. Be a word that edifies and builds up. Verse 10, are you still with me? Yes. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. Okay, we already did that. Great. Okay. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory, he says. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Does, doesn't that sound selfish? Does it sound selfish? Well, see, asking God to bless you is fine as long as you are willing to be a blessing. Okay? He doesn't bless us just to bless us. He blesses us because there are people that he will bring us across bring across our path that need his blessing. So he says, listen, I'll bless you if you would be a conduit, if you would be a channel, if you would be, if you would be an instrument to bless others. Right? Yes. Hey, Lord, I'm game. You know, as opposed to the person, you know, Jesus talks about the person who, who has a lot of things and he, he builds barns to hold these things and they just sit there and rot. When people are in need, my goodness, be a channel that he can flow through. Mm. And then he will bless you. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll fall into the James 4, 3 trap. And James 4, 3 says, what causes fights? I'm going to start with verse 1. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Mm. And this includes wars, right? Uh, don't they come from your desires that battle within you, right? I mean, two people like road rage. What's happening? Something's battling on the inside of them. You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask God, you do not receive. Why? Well, I guess it's just not God's will. Sometimes, but sometimes it's because of this. You do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Let me read the King James Version. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give more, more, more. That's not of the Lord. You will be a very unhappy person if you just get, get, get and get. You will. You will. It says about this territory. To have your territory enlarged means to increase your, jot it down, influence for the kingdom of God. Jabez was going to have influence after this. Okay? And even if it's literal land, you know, God, God blesses him with, with literal land, it wasn't just for him, it was for the people that, that may need a place to stay. In the Old Testament, it says if, if a foreigner comes to your land, let them stay there. Let them stay there. If, you know, if they live peacefully near you. So to have your territory enlarged, to us, spiritually speaking, it means to increase your influence for the sake of the kingdom of God. You can influence more people when God blesses your life. You can. You can. Isaiah uh, 54, 2. It says, enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out your tent curtains. Oh, I don't need that much space. I, I can just live in, in, this, in this four by four foot place. He says, enlarge your place. Stretch out your tent curtains. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cord. Strengthen your stakes. Amen? Amen. You know, so start to have a vision that's bigger than yourself. And if God gives the vision, it's okay. It's okay. Amen? Amen? Listen, even if the vision doesn't come to pass in your lifetime, it's still better for you to have a big vision yes. than no vision at all. Yes. Amen? Amen? Yes. But I, I, I rather live in this expectancy, even if I'm not going to receive it until heaven. I still rather live with this faith and this vision and this hope. Amen? Amen? A few people with me? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. 
Praise God. And he'll, re he'll renew your vision. He'll, he'll revive it. Uh, be sure that you really want this before you pray it, though. Lord, enlarge my territory. Enlarge my influence. Be sure you really... Jesus said, count the cost. Okay? Because in, in Luke 12, 48, it says, to whom much is given, much is expected. Right? Much is required. Right? So if God blesses your life with something, He's done that for a reason. Okay? And, and you, you, can take, you, can, you can apply this to whatever aspect of life. If He blesses you with the ability to play an instrument, the ability to sing, if He blesses you with the ability to encourage people, uh, if He blesses you with the ability to work hard, or, or whatever it is, even if He blesses you with uh, a pickup truck, a pickup truck. Yeah, that's my truck. Oh, yeah? Well, so-and-so needs to move Saturday. Oh, I don't, I don't help people move. Well, get rid of the truck. Okay? You know, because God gave it to you for a reason. It's for the kingdom. It's not just for you, Bubba. Some of you don't like what I'm saying. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You know, this, that's how it is living as a Christian. Philippians chapter 2 says, look, not only for your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Okay? So if he blesses you with something, yes, he wants you to enjoy it, whatever it is. But there are other people that he has in mind besides you. True? Okay. Don't throw stuff at me. And then he says, let your hand be with me. Let your hand be with me. This is a request for such things as protection. Let your hand be with me. Lord, as, as I go and, and as I, I face this day, as I, as I walk here, as I go here, let your protection be with me. Also, things like peace, that God's hand of peace be with me. Uh, things like favor. I don't go out of the house in the morning until I truly realize that God's favor is upon my life. And then you will see that man manifested in various ways throughout a given day. It, it could be as, as you're applying for a job. Well, 100 people, 500 people applied for this job. If God wants you to have that job, you will have that job. Because God's favor is upon you. And you have to live and walk with that. God's favor is upon me. Thank you, Lord. I am his favorite. Praise God. Look at the person next to you. They're God's favorite too. Amen. Does God have favorites? Yes. Every believer in Christ Jesus, you're his favorite. You're, you're the, the teacher's pet, the rabbi's pet. Yes. <laughs> God's favor is upon you. Thank you, Lord, that as I go here, even though it may not be a safe neighborhood, I have to pick up so-and-so or whatever, Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your protection, Lord God. Amen. Thank you for your peace, Lord God. I don't have to be fearful and anxious. I need to be wise, right? But I don't need to be fearful. Uh, thank you, Lord God. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. And if you make it home safe, you give glory to God. Amen. Then it says, along those lines also, keep me free from harm. Or it says, keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. God does protect his people. You know, it is a wicked, wicked world. And, and sometimes things get through the armor of God, unfortunately. Amen? Amen. What, what, whatever it is. You know, oh gosh, accidents, what have you. You know. Face your day with the reality that he can keep you from evil, harm, and pain. Face the day with that reality. Okay? Even if you should be attacked as a believer, you can stand on the promise in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. In there it says, the enemies who come against you one way will flee from you in seven ways. See, it doesn't promise that you'll never be attacked, but it promises that you will overcome. So, when you, when, you, bless you, when you jot down your name, you can put Overcomer. Maybe that's the name you're going to wear. Overcomer. Yes. Overcomer. 
I'm going to overcome this. 